Welcome to another Technique Friday and I thought today that I would talk to you and teach you a little bit about soft pastels. Now not all soft pastels are the same and I have a selection collected over the years. They tend to last for years and years and years. I have one set of Munyo chalks that I got when I was scrapbooking and I used to use them on scrapbook layouts and they're as good today as the day I bought them and I bought them probably about I would say 15 years ago. And then again I also have pastel pencils that you can see here. I have a set of 72 from Derwent which in my opinion are not the best quality but they're certainly a great workable quality and they have reasonable light fastness for their pastel pencils. And one of the things that you um, want to think about when you're using pastels is how you blend them, uh, what sort of paper should you or board should you use these pastels on, how do we use them within mixed media where we have lots of different techniques and I also too think that it's important to have a set of pencils and a set of your thick um, chalks and a set of tools for blending. They often say that you shouldn't use your fingers for blending because of the oils in, in your fingers but it really depends on the techniques that you want to use. Now, I'll just set them aside for a moment. I want to show you a couple of different types of pastel. So I have a Rembrandt. My favourite pastels are the Schminkers. So the Schmincke Pastel, they're an artist pastel and they, in my opinion, have the best pigment of all the pastels. I'll zoom in here and we'll show you. Uh, I also have these Mugnos that I used. Maybe I should get reasonably... I don't know if I have a Rembrandt in the green. I don't have too many Rembrandts. I do have them in an orange or a yellow. All right. So pastels will give you a really nice, soft, buttery kind of texture. And depending on the texture that you have them that you use them on depends on the type of grain. I'm just using like a butcher's paper here for this. Really nice and yummy. And you can blend them in together and get really nice transitions between one to the other to the other. One of the things I love about pastels is you can lay them down. I get covered in them already. You can lay them down and then you can use uh, sponges to have different effects. And what you find is they almost work like an eraser. So you can use in a sponge like an eraser and have softer effects with the sponge. And you can see that it eats into that hard pigment there. And you can flesh that out and, and have really nice smooth transitions. These are pan pastel tools, but they work equally well for things that aren't pan pastels. And I have a selection of wedges and these kinds of tools for fine work uh, and fine blending around eyes and things like that. I don't tend to do landscapes. I'm very much more of a watercolour landscape artist and find that uh, I don't I don't like using huge amounts of pastel. I'm very much into the mixed media method of using pastels where I use them to enhance a colour. Quite often I'll use them to lay down initial types of colour and then I'll seal that layer and then work over the top of it. Now I want to show you some early examples of what I did when I first started experimenting with pastels. 
Let's pop that over there. So this is just a sketching journal and I started using it um, with Jane Davenport's book Beautiful Fabulous Faces um, and Beautiful Faces and I used uh, my soft pastels in a number of different ways so I had my soft pastels up here but I also um, set them with water and did a wash you can also set them with uh, you know matte medium or fixative sprays but I used soft pastels here and I used a little bit of the um, the pencils and a little bit of the the larger pastels to lay down some initial color and you can see the dark purples in the shadows in the eyes and also too I laid down the initial yellows and greens and blues in the eyes they're quite unusual although I do have a friend that has eyes that look pretty much just like that um, I then just used um, color basic color pencil to add in additional kind of features and then you know I went a step further and really started playing around with um, using them in block color and different colors and trying to use non flesh tones and although I kind of didn't really like the way that that turned out it serves a purpose and I haven't fixed that so you can see that the blue in particular and the greens are coming out on the opposite page which is why I've not, nothing on it but I didn't want to set them so much early on I also find let me just have a look and see if I can find any of my other girls all right so I have this lovely girl here and what I did was I put uh, this is more of a mixed media technique. I put a, um, you can see some of the black pencil from across on the other page. And it isn't graphite, it is actually black pencil that's come onto this page. But a soft um, eraser that I use for charcoal works very well. So what I initially did with this girl was I... Uh, put a layer of pastel down and then I set it with matte medium but then I also then put acrylic paint over the top and I added also some more in and so you can get some very soft and gorgeous transitions there again the soft pastel has formed her hair And this was done back in 2015. I don't really draw girls like that anymore. And I was doing Tam's Fabulous Faces class. And this has all been set and fixed, so I don't need to worry about rubbing things out. All I'm trying to do is just get the excess marks off the page. Cool. So there's a lot of soft pastel being used in that, used in this blending here, used around the nose and the eyes, used a little bit in the lips, particularly in the hair, um, used to softly shadow the whites of the eyes. Um, I've used it in conjunction with colour pencils and acrylic paint and also uh, a fine tip black pen. And you see that uh, it has a very kind of soft airbrush kind of look and intensity to it. Um, I also, let me have a look and see if I've done any more in this sketching journal. That's using soft pastels. Ah, soft pastels. So my first attempt using doing in a style of Junibia Gioni. Now I didn't set my page with uh, paint first and a lot of my subsequent sketches with this kind of style. Now this is a cartridge paper and not a pastel paper and what I found was that it it just kind of rubbed in and absorbed the pastel and didn't really give a great kind of a luster to uh, the paper at all and I 
wasn't really impressed with this as a first drawing but I didn't want to persist with it any longer I wanted to change surfaces so one of the things that that you work with well with soft pastels is a pastel pad so this is suitable for soft or hard pastels and mixed media it's 160 GSM so it is more predominantly for dry media it is by Artec, Art Tech um, an A4 and it has and this is what you find with pastel pads lots of neutrals as your undertones so this is the white and it goes through like a sand greys like a beigey greeny beigey color and yellow cream yellow lemon and white now you can see that these are they look like shrinker pastels on the top and it is does have a nice kind of gritty texture for it um, but definitely if you're going to start using soft pastels it's good to tape these to a board use a hard surface and definitely start your sketching with that now the way that I use a lot in mixed media techniques it's more about the way that you lay down your surface so when I lay down my surface for this portrait I laid it down with acrylic paints first and I and I and I picked a particular palette that had lights and warmths and darks in it and it had a lot of transparent paints in it but one thing that I did over the top of this because I wanted the the paper to have grit and a lot of paints these days don't um, a lot of paints unless you've got something like these uh, Delta you know craft paints the ceram coat if you're painting with those as a bottom layer it's perfect for these um, but it's also too partly about uh, getting your paint right and also then adding your pastel over the top so for me I laid down the original layer which is this layer here and it kind of I had an idea of the shape of the face that I wanted to do and I had some of the lighter colors here but I did do another kind of um, coat of paint on, after I'd sketched it in and then before I started sketching in I put a layer of clear gesso so I use Liquitex clear gesso for this particular technique so I had the paint then the clear gesso over the top and that gave it a nice kind of grittiness and that allowed me to really work with it and my um, chalks really gritted very very well then I sketched in um, rather like I did this morning I always sketch in my original design uh, in this case it would have been in whites a white charcoal pencil white and black charcoal pencil originally get the basic kind of features in and then add some more acrylic paint into this process um, where I basically with you know and I will go over my sketch and then have to redefine it again and then what I do is I finalize the painting and do all the finer detail with charcoal pencils and with soft pastels soft pastels and soft pastel pencils and you can see that I'm able to get that nice kind of loose scribbly kind of look there with that kind of technique and this particular girl I just completely love her I did paint another one this morning over on on here so very much using the same kind of technique this is my favorite way for using um, soft pastels where I basically painted on in a basic craft paint with a little bit of gesso to give a little bit of grit into the background then I sketched in with a white and charcoal pencil and you know you can really go over the detail quite well you can see I'll just do this this has even been sealed so it will rub off but you can see how the white really comes up against the paint now with this I can rub it out but the whole bottom of this painting has been sealed and what you can really see here 
is that I've used a lot of different techniques so I've got lighter paint here and mainly darker on this side because the lights coming over this side of her face more and I often when I'm doing this technique I'm using pencils and I'm using the bottom of the pencil as I sketch I hold my pencil in two fingers and just um, I have my picture upright and I, I essentially just work in the shadows and work just adding finer details finer details again and finer details to just get some of those kind of scratchy kind of looks in there and this is you know what I use the pastel pencils for now some of these areas where you can see that it's quite nicely shaded I used let me find the pastel I used so for this particular one these deep blues were this dark schminker pastel and I applied them very loosely and up in here and some in these darker shadows here and in the hair I apply them very loosely and then all I did was smudge them and you can see that the smudging you can really get in with either the tools that I showed you earlier so using fine sponges using your finger even using these sorts of tools to just gently blend around these areas with your faces now I think the whole point that I'm saying with um, basic techniques is that you can start off with your pastels and you can also mix them with gesso you can mix them with water so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down some really nice pastel here and kind of show you different ways that you can use See, these are such beautiful strong pigments I'm just going to bring that out a little bit yeah get that orange back in but very messy and chalky so you've got to really get into the space of you know how these work so I'm going to show you a few different techniques so I'm going to show you that technique where I blend so I've got this kind of colour and then I might even add in something like this and you and you think to yourself oh that makes a neutral alright so you have to be careful with it but when I get my water see we can activate it like a, a powdery pigment and you're right it's making that smoky smoky purple neutral which you can then use as a base to start doing something else with right now I can use a little bit of gesso and I'm going to do this on the orange spot here So I've got my gesso and I'm going to mix it into the pigment. And you can tint your gesso with soft pastel. This, the paint from the gesso is going to seal this pastel. So there you've got a really lovely apricot gesso that's been created by that that orange that bright orange pastel so it's interesting that you could start coloring in faces and then put a layer of gesso over it and think about the way that that blends out and I'll show you that in just a moment 
so there's another way that you can work with these and that's with a matte medium and you can mix these together you can really mix them in one on top of the other create awesome kind of textures and patterns scrub some out rub some out and I'm just showing you different ways that you can seal them and use them as color so one way that you can seal also is to get some matte medium and then you've got this like clear glaze that you can use and who would have thought right now everything below this matte medium will be sealed in so now we've created this beautiful clear glaze and see they are glad clear that you get those nice brush strokes with and I sometimes use that with faces too but I tend to have much less pigment right much less matte medium and much less pigment with me as well the other thing that you need to remember is that you're going to use a fixative I'll just get the fixative that I'm using at the moment. So if you're working in layers and you want to preserve, like I preserved the layers in this with a workable fixative and then I've actually varnished them as well when I've finished with them. It says a workable fixative. This is um, National Art Materials, this is ozone friendly, colourless protection for pastel chalk, charcoal and pencil drawings and it allows you, it fixes the artwork so it can be reworked and protects artwork from smudging and it dries very quickly. So this is not supposed to be a final coat um, but it definitely is really good for sealing work that you have in journals um, like that brown one that I did um, she's sealed with a workable fixative okay so I'm not going to sketch anything today I'm just going to quickly ink in uh, one of my face stencils these face stencils are available in my Etsy store Lady Petal Creations and this is how I like to use these stencils so I just get an outline very gentle outline I do these so that you can decide how you will interpret your stencil or my stencils all right okay so I was a little bit sketchy with the way that I did that but that suits my purposes just fine let me just add in with some colored pencil some of the breaks that we get in her hair to work with something that's this small is to get your basic sketches out and to pick some of your shadow tones first so for this little girl I'm going to pick some purple for her shadow tones first I'm actually going to apply them It allows you to be very gentle with your application.
and I'm just putting in where I know a lot of the shadows will be and you can see that they're looking quite dark at the moment Now what I can do is I can put a really nice kind of a pale, I then kind of work out the residue there, but I can also put a nice kind of peachy pale flesh tone and I'm just searching through, I've got quite a few kind of yummy flesh tones and I'm just going to pop them in. And again, I'm going to mix them just softly. And this tool allows me to do that easily. So now I'm adding that in over the top of some of the other and where the white was as well. And the transitions and the beautiful tones that you get to have with that. You know, just add in more. So I can add in more features if I want to. So this is more of a peachy tone. And again, it just adds and adds and adds. Now I can kind of go over the top of everything that I've done there. And even so, we see, we start to see the blending of light and dark. Now one thing that you can do is you can use your gummy eraser, your kneadable eraser and you can take out somewhere where there might be highlights and you can rub that out and keep taking a little bit more out I'm just going to do it where I know that the light's hitting Okay, so now what I can go, and I've still got pastel on here, I can just go in again and just gently go over so that I can grade where I've rubbed out. But I can also go in again and reapply my shadows. But I just do it in the darkest little spots now. And I've already got some of that pigment on there so all I want to do is blend that in and like I said these applicators often take away and they add at the same time And they say you shouldn't blow it away because your breath does things to the pastels as well. But all right, so we've got some of those uh, low lights in, but now we can add some highlights. I have some white and some pale pink, so I'm going to add in some pale pink.
I'm going to add in some white. I'm just getting rid of the excess before I start and this time I'm just going to get away the excess of the pigment right so now I'm just going to blend in the, where the white is and the light pink and we're starting to get a picture now where we've got Some areas of light and shade and this is all with your pastels so far so technically you could leave her as that let me just rub out there but I tend to want to fix it or seal it I'm going to add in A little bit of a deep pink but I'm just going to put it on my tool and I'm just going to have it at the top and at the bottom and again I'm just going to rub out One thing I like about having that stamped image is you're not going to rub out any pencil. And those rubbers, uh, these erasers sometimes do uh, rub out some of or smudge Prisma pencil as well. So you've got to be aware of that. You can also then put your white into the eye. And a little bit of a light grey. So you've got a, just a tiny little bit of light grey there. And again, a pastel pencil in a black. Really that allows you to put some of your finer details in and you've got a very soft kind of looking face there She's looking quite pretty. I'm just going to add in a little bit of dark blue at the top. She's got a very open eye. And you can add in the lovely fine details. And then Gently smudge them as well. Okay. I also am going to do this into a very fine point and just kind of take out a little bit under here. And your eraser. is a very important tool here. Okay, so we've got that. Let me just get a pink pastel pencil to just bring in 
the top of that lip and the bottom of the lip. which you can leave which you can just gently smudge quite often I like to leave them once I smudge them I just add in a tiny bit more and blow away the excess now with the hair I'm going to do like an orangey brownie ready kind of hair So we can again have a look at, I've got the lights and the darks and I left a lot of white space. So we can again go in and kind of paint her hair in. If you want that kind of sketchy look. And then sometimes I will go in and just add in further details with the pastel pencil and darker details. And I'll leave it like that and leave it as a sketchy look. Now something that you can do now that you've got that kind of image in and I'm just going to put her dress in here doing it with a, a Derwent pastel pencil um, I can seal that at this point and then decide to use colour pencils over it or paint over it or whatever I like or I can use um, a very soft uh, matte gel medium matte medium now to go over that those features but it does smudge the features a bit but I just want to give you an idea of how the hair can look when you do that so one of the things with your soft your matte medium is long nice strokes And what this does is it firms up the colour. And see how the colour becomes more brilliant and vibrant. Always going with the directionality of the hair. And you can see the difference between the hair now and the face. So if I get all the pigment out of that brush and I have a look at the face, this is how you can seal the face but it's not going to retain its light colour. And you have to be very careful around your finer details now. If I was doing this, I would have done it before I did any of the eyelashes or the eye. and I'm using a very very light touch and see how that black's moving so this is what you this is why I wouldn't do the eyelashes first 
and I'm just going to move that pigment out and start with clean pigment the next time. And try and do each area individually to seal it. And it does drag the colour. But it then seals the page. And you can then work over the top of the page. I'm just being very careful around the eye to seal it. Now we have to wait for that to dry and I'll show you what it looks like then when it's dry. And this is what it's like to work with soft pastels kind of in a mixed media sense. And they're, they're your base layer. So let's get that dry and I'll be back. Okay, so this little girl is now very dry. So we can come in and have a good look. So you can see that she's totally now sealed. And now you can do additional things. Like you might want to add in some pencil over the top, which you can do. You can add in pencil, you can add in paint. You can redefine, you can add some further details in pencil of her hair. And I'm just, you know, kind of sketching it a little bit, not really doing too much. And I've left my bunny there. <laughs> And that all goes very well, all of it goes very well over the matte medium. Now you can also add in things like a white sharpie, so let's go back in and have a look at her eye. So we might just add in a white sharpie there, and we might add in a little bit there, we might add in a little bit on the tip of her nose and a little bit here and a little bit there which I'll just blot a little bit and that kind of just adds a few other little highlights for us you can even add it to her hair and of course this is only being done on like butcher's paper so but now it gives you a workable surface where you can do more things. You can smudge that a little bit when it's still wet, which I like to do a lot. And that gives you a little bit more flexibility in, you know, the workability of the piece altogether. I've got a little fine line of blue pen there that I might just put in a little bit of colour into her eye and she might just have a little bit of a blue outline there. I've got the same sort of thing in pink somewhere. Or I might just use a biro. I guess you can use anything that you like that works. Black biro. You can just blacken some of those details in.
wherever they all work for you. And she's looking pretty cute. You might want to just re-sketch some of those details in. You're going to work with the bunny. And what I find here is you can add some further shadowing in to her hair. And then we get a girl that's kind of looking a little bit more fleshed out. And she's looking pretty cute. Uh, I don't like that line there, so I'm just going to... Take a bit off it. I often dab a bit on these sides and then dab a bit off so that they don't look quite so white. Okay, so that concludes my Technique Friday on soft pastels. I really like the fact that you can use them within mixed media space and that's the context that I, I'm not a pastel artist, but that's the context that I like to use my soft pastels in. And this is all soft pastels with a little bit of extra thrown on top. I could now add some more paint and do extra things, but you could leave that as you want. And then your pastels are sealed. Like I said, you could also have used a fixative there and done the same thing, had a slightly different look to it. And of course the paper paid a bit of part in that because this paper is thinner kind of paper. So any work that I did on this kind of, you know, went through that paper and gives it a slightly different sheen as it soaks into the paper. All right. Thanks for being with me for Technique Friday. Ciao for now. It's always good to learn something new. It keeps you young.